The focus for today's meeting is simple technology for small business. Simple technology for small business. So we are going to talk about how can you use something as trivial as your phone, as trivial as your social media handle to advance your business. So that some of the things we're going to talk about. We have three key speakers today whom we're going to interview. Oh, incredibly and uh, to my delight, they are all here. You know, all, most of the programs you go for, when you, after all, everybody has come, then the speakers will now come in so that we can clap for them. But our speakers here, <laughs> our speakers here, they have come before us. And I'm glad to, the two speakers are here physically present. And one of them, he'll be joining us online via Google Handouts. Uh, Hangouts. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Uncle Evans, you're welcome. So, the first thing we're going to, like I said, we're going to watch a little video. I want you to pay rapt attention. Because one of the concepts of Yensha, I'm sure you have attended a lot of programs elsewhere where people talk at you. You know what I mean by talk at? Talk at you. That means they just pour information on you, you know, go through slides. But one of the things we do here is because, because we're a small group, we try to get contributions from each other. We try to have people air their views. Because one of the things about learning is that when you are able to voice out what you think about an idea, the idea sticks better. So we like to interact. We don't want to just talk at you and have you go away that it was a great program. Meanwhile, it made no impact to you. So we're going to watch a video for the next 10 minutes. And then we will talk about it. We'll come back to the slides. I will come back to the, um, the drivers. Okay, I'm sorry. You know what? It's, it's good for us to go through the concept for those who are not here the last time. Now, let's look at this. I, I don't know. What, some of us must, may remember this. We said Yen Shia or Connect. Welcome, uh, William. Connect, which we have transitioned to Yen Shia, is about these five pillars. Let's go through them together. Number one. Let's read them together. What, number one. Oh, uh, I have half of them, half of them, my audience sleeping. Is that true? So let's try again. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Promote trust. Trust people and work on being trusted. Number five. Promote local content. So these are the philosophies of this movement. And I'm sure they, they are easy to understand. Does anybody have a difficulty understanding any one of them? No. So we are all smart and brilliant people. So they are simple concepts. That is what we want to drive with this movement. And is in the context of business, small business. SMEs account for probably 70 to 80 percent of any economy in the world. In in an economy as advanced as as the United Kingdom, SMEs account probably for one billion pounds of the GDP. GDP. So SMEs small and medium enterprises are critically important to any environment, any country. So we are seeing what we can do to support people who are launching out to you know, start businesses, to do something meaningful with their lives. And these are the pillars, the values we pick. Our, our values are not just about making money, but how can you incorporate a, a, a system of thinking that, deter, that makes sure your business is not just a quick uh, get rid of scheme that lasts for a short time. Any, any business that is focused solely on money will last for a very short time if you don't have any value. So let's proceed. Now, watch, let's watch this um, video and then we'll discuss it. Pay rapt attention. We are living in an era of constant discontinuity. <laughs> So, 
will stop there. We can always complete watching the video. Please help me because I'm sure somebody looking for us. All right. So are we still together? Now, if you had absolutely no idea what we are talking about in this video, raise your hands. Absolutely no idea. Okay. If you had 50% of an idea of what we are talking about in this video, 50% or, or less, raise your hand, or less. If you had 100% understanding of what he's talking about, raise your hands. 100%. 70%. Okay, fine. So at least we have a broad range of understanding. Now let me try to bring it home. Um, how many of you grew up when we had um, the video rentals? Shops, shop by the side that you, when you go there, they'll rent a video, they'll rent you a video and then you will uh, pay some money and then bring it back. You remember that? Yeah. When last did you see a shop like that? Welcome, ma. <laughs> when last did you see a shop like that? 1989, 90, when? You don't even remember, right? Why did they close down? Who can give me one idea? YouTube. YouTube. Good. DSTV. Sorry? DSTV. DSTV. Pen drives. <laughs> DVD. DVD. Everything, everything you've mentioned is what? Digital. And that's why I call it technology disruption or digital disruption. Certain things happen suddenly and your business is no longer relevant. Do you understand? The business that you have built over 20 years, 30 years, certain things happen and suddenly your business is no longer relevant. Are you are getting the point, right? Another example is a company called Kodak. Kodak used to make, you know, you know Polaroid photos. Do you remember them? Do you remember you used to make uh, these cameras? When last did you buy <laughs> a camera like that? Oh, well, okay. When last did you go to a, a, a studio to take a photograph? How many people ask you for a photograph a week? <laughs> He's a photographer. That's what I'm asking him. <laughs> why? Why? Why do you think that happened? Memory chip. Memory chip. No, aside from memory, there's a basic one in your hand right now. Everybody has a phone. And in any simple phone can take the quality of pictures that's the same quality of pictures than a, a typical camera, except you really want to go haywire. And even if you want to go haywire, when you take the picture with your phone, you can edit it with what Photoshop and stuff. So, in fact, I'm even going tech. You can edit it with Canva, a free app on your phone. That is what you call what? Digital disruption. Certain things suddenly happen and if you are sleeping while it was building up, suddenly you wake up and your business, you start asking yourself, you start praying. You go for 90 days fasting because you think demons are after you. What happened was not demons. It was that you were sleeping while the changes were happening and suddenly it caught up with you. So that's what we call disruption. A major digital innovation that suddenly makes certain aspects of our lives you know, irrelevant. And it can happen to big companies, it can happen to what? Small companies. But you see, the thing about big companies is that they have, sometimes they have the muscle to take it. And they can suddenly start doing something else. A lot of small companies, something can happen and you don't even have the muscle to take it. Suddenly, you're out of business. And people like my friend, Mr. Richard Wood, is disrupting the banks. <laughs> <laughs> fintechs are disrupting the banks because I, I have a I have a there's, an, there's a, a friend of ours a senior friend of ours in Nigeria called Yinka, I forgot his surname he started a digital bank called Rubies digital bank means you don't have to go to any banking hall you can save money, of course everybody here now has mobile money, you can save money on your phone right, you can transfer money you can invest from your phone and all that. He left Echo Bank to do that and started that bank. And he has, I hear, the last time I checked, uh, someone, one of us told us, he has about a million members. And one of the tricks that he used was that he introduced what you call multi-level marketing in his business. That means if you refer people to, jo to download and install the app, you start making money when they do the investment. That means that he doesn't have any marketers, but he has hit one million 
customers in Nigeria. That is what disruption. The, the normal way we know things work, they suddenly stop working that way. So let me ask some questions. Based on what I've tried to explain and the video, I want to ask those of us who say we understood 50% and up of what the video was about. I want you to tell me one thing that struck you in what the gentleman said. His name is um, Vidya Munigan. He's from Mauritius. So let somebody volunteer, Paul. Remember I told you that he's not a talk at you conference. <laughs> One thing that hits uh, me really hard is that you know if you are taking one from you and you are sleeping while the changes that is being made, I was just thinking about the amount of money that you use, mm -hmm. the customer that you use, and probably the people that you employ. Mm -hmm. In that way, they're going to cost massive value. Okay. I don't want to. I, I don't think uh, it doesn't have any relation with the closure of the banks, mm -hmm. but I'm just thinking into that. Uh, Okay, uh, that context, yeah. The number of people who have probably lost their lives. Pre precisely. Uh, as due to the, due to the top managers sleeping. So it does have an impact not just on business as we know business, on money, but on people's what? Lives. Brilliant. So what are, who has another point? Yes, sir. To learn things you've learned in the past, and we learn. This is a powerful the powerful media man because i don't want to call him camera man again remember camera men are face be face that <laughs> okay so he's on learning something he knew before and he wants to learn something new because he needs to catch up with the current trends now uh recall when he said that somebody comes to a company and says i have 30 years experience in what for example now if if I come and say, I have 30 years experience in video lending, will you employ me? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> okay, I have 30 years experience in taking uh, amazing photographs. Uh, why? Another 30 years experience. I have 30 years experience in typewriting. You don't want to type, you don't want to type it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some, some machine will type it for you, right? So, the, what is, there are things that are changing. Jobs are moving away. Certain jobs are moving away. No matter how long your experience is, the job is moving away. It's as simple as that. So, new kinds of jobs are, are emerging. So, like he said, forget what you knew before. Look for the new kind of job that, will, uh, that fits your background and learn it. Number three, one more please. Something that struck you. Yeah, I think for me, yes. by the fact that by the year 2023, we have like 2 billion more new bankers, and out of them, 80% will never step you in. You will never step in the banking hall. It's, it's, not, it's not a fairy tale. It is real. 80% yes. <laughs> will never step in the bank. It's just like I've gone to. Um, saying that when it eats for the next 10 years i'm going to eat but i'll never step in a restaurant yeah, right. it doesn't make sense yes but it's real yeah that means digital innovation is really going to transform the way we live our lives today it's transforming the way we live our lives now do you remember the cassette tape how many okay some of us have children here or some of us maybe teach children do you remember cassette tape yeah, yeah. if you show it to somebody that is maybe 20 uh, 60 years old now do you think they will recognize it they won't recognize it. What is this? What is this? <laughs> but for in your mind, it's so it's so fresh, right? What do you think happened to companies that were making cassette tapes? People who fix them, you know. Sometimes you have this uh, the the tape gets coiled, and so they are that they are experts in fixing. <laughs> it's gone. And it, for you right now, it is history, Williams. I'm coming to you. Is history, but there are certain things that are happening now that will be history to you and to some people in, in less than 10 years. That's the truth, that's life. William, I just wanted to contribute to the banking sector. Yes, that people don't have to walk into the bank. Now, there are ATMs that are set like yeah, yes, so there's no need to join the queue exactly. Mm -hmm. Precisely, mm -hmm. and, and even beyond that. 
every, almost every bank has a mobile app now for USSD and people are building, like I said, banks that are purely electronic. Okay. Yes. yes. Just a quick one. Yes. In, in, in that regard, so if a company that's focused on something collapses, there's going to be a rippling effect. Yes. You see that all those industries that were supporting that company to work, all those industries also, also collapse. Mm. So it is not just one company collapsing, mm. but all the supporting companies that makes. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very real. Mm -hmm. Okay, very real. Okay, uh, somebody has to. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll do the mic, don't worry. Can you still hear me? Yes. My voice is good. Now, look at the industries that he mentioned. Some of the industries I mentioned. Am I correct? Yes. You are listening, right? He mentioned banking, he mentioned education, and then he mentioned health. Most of all, what we've been saying here is around banking. Am I correct? Now, he mentioned education and he mentioned something called the MOOC platform, MOOC.org, M-O-O-C dot O-R-G. MOOC.org is a, a, a brainchild of a company called edX, and they have partnered with uh, MIT and Harvard. Do you know MIT and Harvard? Yeah. Do, do, you know, do you know fellow inventor of technology, Naked? How many of you know that? <laughs> <laughs> do you know why you know MIT and Harvard? They are probably the biggest universities on earth. Am I correct? Uh -huh. But you don't know Kwara State University. <laughs> yes. They are the biggest universities on earth. They have come together. They are providing educational content on MOOC.org. You can check it out. M-O-O-C dot O-R-G. And what happens is you are learning for free. If you want a certificate, you pay maybe a small amount of money. I, I think he mentioned it, right? Now, the truth is, what does that mean? That means that in some years, the master's degree that you pay ten thousand pounds for, somebody will get it free, right? Yes. <laughs> it will get, somebody will get it free, and in some years too, the people that have been advising advertising jobs and saying, "Oh, uh, uh, required master's degree, doctorate," very soon they will remove all those things. Oh, do you, do you know that? Very soon they will remove all of it. Google has, Google has moved this, right? Cool. We don't need a BSc. We don't need the BSc to work in Google. So that means the disruptions are creating opportunities. They are also creating uh, mishaps in certain areas. So the person who is now aware of what is coming needs to position himself to be on the side of advantage, right? when these disruptions happen. And he talked about health. Let we, because of time, we'll just move a little faster. But I think we're getting the idea and we're learning something. One of the things I want to ask you to think about right now, if you're working for someone or if you have your own business, ask yourself, in what way will disruption affect me? That's what we need to ask ourselves. That's what we need to be prepared for. If the skills that I have now are no longer required, I used to be a DBA, and I look into the future and say, okay, Oracle is talking about autonomous databases. We are talking about containers. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I know that for some people, I'm speaking to foreign language, but allow me for a few seconds. We're talking about containers, and you can spin up databases very easily. And you know, it means that a skill set that requires you digging deep into those systems may not be relevant again in five years because machines are taking over those skills. If you're a call center agent, if you're a call center agent, uh, IBM Watson, there's a, there's a machine called IBM Watson. It can answer calls, respond to you. Have you ever done a chat on a website where you know the person chatting with you is not a, is not a human being, right? Uh -huh. So you have those coming. So call centers, you say, I want to, I want, you know, in those days when I was in Airtel, the way you enter, one of the key ways you enter Airtel is to first of all become a call center agent. Then you can get other job opportunities inside. Those, that strategy is no longer available because the person who is taking over call center work is called Mr. Watson, IBM Watson. And he can do it much better than many people. 
and in, in my environment, certain things are coming up where certain jobs that require you doing the same thing over and over again, we call them repetitive jobs or routine, routine tasks, can be taken over by artificial what? Intelligence. So that, uh, that, makes, that makes you think as a, if you are working in that area and that you know, now you need to strategize. Over the next one year, what new skill can I learn to prepare myself to exit? You see, if we don't say it like that, you, you, you think uh, you don't want to offend somebody, you don't want to, but you have to say it like that. What can I do to exit this role? Because this role is no longer what? Relevant. And the same way in terms of business. If you're doing a business that is impacted in these ways, you have to ask yourself, what can I do to switch business? Because this business is no longer lucrative. Do you know the advantage that SMEs have? They are what you call agile. How many of you have heard the word agile? Some of us have learned it in terms of gymna gymnastics. Some of us have learned it in terms of <laughs> IT. <laughs> but agile, it means it's the same concept. The concept is that I can move what? Quickly. Small businesses can move quickly. Big businesses, you have to shift, you have to do a lot of processes to move. And in the part of the processes they do is typically the quickest way for a business to survive a disruption is to let go of staff because they have to cut costs. If a part of the business is no longer relevant, they have to first of all, first of all, cut the decaying arm. That's what happened. That's the reality. If you are the CEO, you would do the same thing. Do you know that? If you are the CEO, you will do exactly the same thing. It's not wickedness. It's survival. So you that are part of that arm, <laughs> am I being too harsh? Yes. Okay, no. <laughs> you that are part of that arm, you need to now be aware that this is my life we're talking about. This is not just money. This is my, what? Life. What can I do to continue? So attitudes that I... I picked up that I wanted us to go together, with, uh, pick up from this segment. You need to have an awesome attitude. That means if somebody like me is telling you about something that is about to expire, don't get angry. Accept it as the reality <laughs> and see what actions that you can make, take about it. Number two, open mindedness. That means you want to learn something new, like my brother said. You want to take correction, like my brother said. Aggressive curiosity. Seek to know, seek to learn, right? You, you want to know what is the next thing happening in this my area. Number four, bespoke agility. That means you need to be able to move quickly. Design your business in such a way that when the change needs to happen, it will happen quickly. Have a thirst for knowledge. That is related to curiosity. And when we talk about knowledge, you need to, you know, follow a path. You need to know, okay, what, where am I heading to? Where, where will the world be in 10 years? And follow that path until you are an expert at something that is relevant in 10 years. That's the path of seeking knowledge. And customer focus. Get feedback for your customer. Because your competitors are many. And you need to have an edge, you know, beyond your competitor, you understand? You need to have an edge. And one of the things, one of the simple things you can do to have an edge is to relate with people properly. That's one thing we need to deal with in certain, in this part of the world. Relate, understand that the person you are talking to as your customer is the person paying your bills. Hello? Are we together? Yes. All right. So these are key things I picked up from there. Finally, um, let me see. Yes. Time check. What, what time is it? 35. So we're five minutes behind time. You see? Please clap for Yensha. So we're doing well, right? Are we doing well? <laughs> All right. So we're going to move into today's focus area. Uh, we've just, uh, what, I've, what we've done with the last segment is to just tear up our minds to the fact that we need to know that technology impacts our lives significantly both whether we are working for someone or whether we are running our own business and we need to prepare ourselves for the changes that will happen over the next few sections we will learn a few small technologies that can help us to um something can infuse into our businesses that will help us do better before we go ahead, I want you to look at someone's face that you've not seen before 
and say hello and introduce yourself. If you have your card, exchange your card. If you have a business idea or you're doing a business, tell the person, I am, I am this and that. Do it now. This is your opportunity. 